is all I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands. Can we lift our hands, everyone? Bowing hearts is all I've come to do. Just lift your hands as the music plays. Behold the Lamb that sits upon the throne, the one who has prevailed, worthy to take the book and to open the scrolls thereof. The four and twenty elders, they bow before you, and they cry, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty, which was and is to come.
their list. You are there. Even over the internet, online, you are there. Your presence is not lesser online. It is in the real space. You are sovereign. There you are. So we have to declare your life. Even over the internet, online, you are there. Your presence is not lesser online. Iman, it is in the real world. Iman, you are suffering. There you are. So we have to declare your mind. Iman, your presence is not lesser online. Iman, your name we pray. So we have to declare your mind. Iman. to introduce you to Rest Assured Posture Guard Gentle. This medium comfort, no firm mattress, is made up of a high density, firm in place pocket spring unit. We'd like to introduce you to Rest Assured Posture Guard Gentle. This medium comfort, no firm mattress, is made up of a high density, firm in place pocket spring unit. We'd like to introduce you to Rest Assured Posture Guard Gentle. This medium comfort, no firm mattress, is made out of a high density, firm in place pocket spring unit. We'd like to introduce you to Rest Assured Posture Guard Gentle. This medium comfort, no
Hallelujah. Your name I'm the one who Amen, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our Savior. Glory to our Master. Uh, we greet you, blessed saint. We greet you, blessed viewers. We welcome you all to today's broadcast. 
Welcome, blessed saints. Welcome, brothers. Uh, welcome to the presence of God. Welcome to Monday Bible online session with Apostle Kenneth C.J. Christ, the son of Prophet Sekodane. I bring you love, blessed saints. I bring you love, brothers and sisters. I bring you greetings from our father, my, our mentor, our Christ. Thank you so much for making an appointment with no disappointment. Uh, thank you so much for making time to be with us. Thank you for uh, your patience. Thank you for your perseverance. Uh, thank you for the love. Thank you for dedication. Thank you for the wonderful commitment. Uh, this is uh, uh, we all together uh, reaching different parts of the world. Uh, reaching all the saints from all corners of the world, uh, bringing the world, bringing the word that is life, bringing the word that is truth, uh, bringing this word upon their hearing, uh, the word that set free, uh, the word that is life, the word that is internal. Uh, and, and this is how um, the world will come to know. Remember, uh, we are better true love. We are no true love. And it's the same love that bears us that is at work in our daily life. So we are nothing without love. So we thank God for this wonderful love. Uh, we thank God for this uh, wonderful time. Uh, we thank God for this wonderful privilege and honor of being in in the in in this uh, uh, wonderful uh, time, in this set appointed time. It is a wonderful privilege for we all to come together and and be in His presence. Um, it takes one who understand what love is. It takes one who understand what love has done for he or our life to understand or what it takes for one to be in His presence. So uh, Jesus knew the price he was going to pay. He knew the price that he was off offered himself for. So, but he allowed the love of the Father to continue to lead him and lead him abundantly. So, uh, he was not going out of his own. He was not doing out of his will, but according to the will of the Father. So, the love of the Father covers him at all times. The love of the Father strengthens him. The love, of, the love of the Father was with him. That's why he was able to give love. That's why he was willing at all times. Christ is love. Christ is God. God is love. That's why the Spirit of God, the Messiah, when he came upon him, he, he was more than willing. He was more than willing. He does what no, no man can do because the willingness of God, that Christ enables him to do that. So uh, it is also a privilege. A great privilege for Jesus, just as it's a great privilege for us, we all. Uh, we all also are under the same grace, the same grace. Remember, uh, it is not the work that we did. It is not the work that we have done uh, that we are, are, are here today. No, but by grace, by grace, meaning grace chose us. And it's the same grace that Jesus spoke about when he said, go ye into, the world, into all the world. Go ye into the world. Go ye into the world. Go ye into nations. Go ye into the world into nations. In, nations are there in the world. Nations are there in the world. See, he, he said to his disciples in Matthew 20, go ye into the world. Nations into the world. So you are a nation. Uh, it doesn't matter where, where it doesn't matter which, uh, uh, where, where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. If if you are in in any part of the world, in the, you find yourself in Asia, you find yourself in North and South America, or you find yourself in Europe, you find yourself in Africa, you are in the world, a nation, a nation in the world. So Matthew 5, Jesus said, you are a light of this nation, a light of the nation that you are in, a city on a hill. is a light that you, that came from me, the light that gave you, that gave you the authority of the spoken word. He said, you are the light of the world, a light that can never be dimmed. So you can never be dimmed. You are to replenish. You are to 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 uh, to grow. You are to grow. You are to subdue. You are to to lighten. To thunder. To thunder. To thunder. So the light that is seeing you allow you to thunder. The love that is seeing you allow you to thunder. And many, many, many will receive the spirit. Many, many, many will be saved through it. Many, many, many will be will welcome. Will welcome it because it saves. Because it's welcoming, the light is welcoming. Anyone that comes that cross the presence of the Father, remain in that presence. You can you cannot come in His presence and walk out of His presence. Because in His presence, there is so there is liberty. There is liberty. A mind that is of fear, 
A mind that is of fear, as soon as a mind walk into his presence, that fear departs that mind. You find that mind remaining, saying, I do not separate, I do not want That's why David, David who says in Psalm 51, say, do not separate me, to cast me not away from your presence. Do not, it does not want to leave his presence. It does not want to leave his presence. Listen to what uh, uh, what happened between uh, between uh, uh, the enemy and Job. Listen, the enemy joined the angels of the angel of the Lord when they were going. To give report, to give report to God. The angel of the Lord were going. Satan accompanied, he went with them. And Satan, when, when God saw Satan, I mean, is there in, in Job chapter one? God said, where, where are you coming from? He said, he been looking around, looking around. Meaning, he's searching, but he cannot touch those ones that the prince of God is. There, you see, he it says, it says in some nature, under his refuge. You see, when you are under the refuge of the Father, his presence is there. And where the prince of the father is, there is fullness. There is freedom. There is liberty. There is also willingness. Willingness to overcome. Willingness to overcome. Willingness to overcome adversity. Willingness to overcome challenges. Willingness to know that you are an overcomer. Because in his presence, there can never be any defeat. So the enemy says, ah, I've been looking around, looking for who to devour, meaning there is no rest for the wicked. The, the enemy is always on the prowl, looking for who to devour. So the ones that are not under the prince of God, they are vulnerable for the enemy to lodge the attack on them. So now, God presence, God said, I've given Job to you now. Listen, I'm giving Job to you. Meaning the prince of the God left Job at that point in time. So the enemy had, the enemy had opportunity to strike Job. But still, Job refuses. He refuses. He refuses. He refuses. He refuses. There are many today who, who have the same experience as Job. And trials that we go through. Temptation that happens. Challenges that happen. The daily adversity that happened right in front of us is to show, to prove, it's an attestment for you to know that if you confess him as your Lord and Savior and you believe in him, you believe in the Lord of glory, no matter the storm, no matter the rain, no matter the wind, no matter the sickness, no matter the infirmity, you will remain. You will remain untouchable. You can never be touched. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can touch you. Remember Job chapter 1. Nothing could touch him. Nothing could prevail him. Because he still confessed him. He said, look at the confession he made here. The confession was simple. He said, it's the Lord that gives. is the Lord that takes. Meaning he knew that only God has authority. Because all power, let's face it, all power belongs to him. All power belongs to the Father. All power belongs to him. All power belongs to him. All power belongs to the Father. In heaven and in earth, all power belongs to him. See, all power belongs to him in heaven and, in, and on earth. All power belongs to him. Now, Matthew 28, see, the authority, the authority, Jesus, Jesus Christ said, all authority, meaning all power that belongs to God in heaven and on earth. All authority, all power has been given unto him. So John chapter 1, verse 4, said, In him was life, and the life became the light of men, meaning all power became the light of men. Now, this is, this is God's plan. This is God's intention. This is God doing. Because John 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten soul, whosoever believed in him, such a believer will not perish, but have everlasting life. Have everlasting life. So the enemy went and touched Job. But Job still was untouchable. And Job still was untouchable. So the self viewers understand who you are in Christ. Understand that you are more than a conqueror. Understand you can never be touched. Understand that those trials, understand that those temptations, they are there to elevate you, to cause you 
to enter into promotion, meaning promoting your level of, of Christianity, taking you in further into knowing the fullness. There's a fullness that one must attain. So Apostle Paul said, I'm still advancing, even though it was revealing mystery, even though it was revealing mystery, even though it was speaking from the depth, from the depth, something that Peter Peter and John and the other disciples, his brothers, they could not speak what he was saying, meaning they could not make out the words that was coming out of his mouth. So Apostle Paul was revealing mystery, but still, he still said to them, I'm still advancing, meaning I'm, I'm not yet, I'm yet to reach, meaning in order for him to advance, there has to be, there has to be challenges. In order for him to advance, there has to be challenges. You know, in life, when, when you are getting, when you, when you seek promotion, there's what we call test. There's what we call exam. You go through tests, you go through exams. And as you go through this test and you go through these exams, they are enabling you, taking you to the height, meaning promoting you from one level to another level. So also the Christian life, the Christianity life, those challenges, they are there. You see, Persecution must be a way of your life. You must not deform yourself from the world. Meaning you must not default to nature or to natural. Because you are not of natural. So, so don't allow the, the issue of natural to conform you to be into natural state, state of mind. No, you are not. So we are going to intercede right now, blessed viewers. We still are, are going to intercede. Uh, we are going to intercede right now. Remember, uh, we are saved to save others. We are blessed to bless others. So uh, as, as, as grace rescued us, as grace spoke for us, as grace chose us, so also uh, uh, we, we must equally allow others also to have uh, saved grace by sharing. Remember John 1 verse 16, say, out of his fullness, we receive what? An inheritance. An inheritance that was received from out of his fullness. So uh, this is the grace, this is the love, this is the mercy of God that is at work. So let us flow in his mercy and let us flow in his goodness, and let's continue to become uh, to to be a uh, divine partaker of this nature. So right now, join us as we are going to be praying, as we are going to be interceding for nations, as we are going to be interceding for the world. Uh, let us pray. Let us pray for the nations. Let us pray for leaders. Uh, remember, remember, you are the light of your nation. So you are representing your nation. You don't fold your hand and see things happening. You don't fold your hand and hold back on things that is ongoing. You don't fold your hand and not uh, uh, attributing to, to what, you, what you carry, meaning you don't, meaning you, you don't reflect the grace, the Christ that is in you, on, on the society that you are living in, on the community that is that, that you live in, on the nation that you are representing. You are the light of that nation. So don't fold your hand. Rather, pray in the spirit. Pray with the word that you carry and let the world do what he will do. God says, I will watch and see that I see my word into performance. The word of the Lord is in your heart, is in your mouth. When you speak it, God is busy to watch. God will not come and do what he has already done. God has already done it, meaning God has given you what is working. God has given you what is performing. God has given you what is what is a perfection. So as you declare this word, as you speak this word out of the heart of abundance, the mouth speaks. As you speak in prayer, the word of the Lord goes and begin to perfect lives, meaning begin to perfect nations, meaning begin to perfect the world, begin to perfect the world, begin to perfect the society and the community at large because the word has been declared. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the president. Pray for your country. Pray for those that are in, in hospital. Pray for those that are in different orphanage centers. Pray against human trafficking that is happening in the world. It's a world problem. It's not just a, a societal problem. It's not just a community problem. It's not just a, a, a national problem. It's an international, meaning a world problem that is happening. The whole world, uh, there's a syndicate that is ongoing and these people have been there for years uh, 
trafficking human beings, uh, kidnapping innocent children, boys and girls are being kidnapped daily on a daily basis. Every time you get this news, every time some parents are even in fearful of sending their kids out because of the nature of the things that is happening in their society, the lot of evil presence that is ongoing, it is a, it is a duty of a Christian, it is a duty of a believer to stand in the gap to stand in the gap and stamp the authority, the authority of the world that God has placed in your heart, the authority of the world that Jesus Christ has commanded you as a believer. Now it is time, it is high time, and it's a, a time is coming, and that time is now. It is not tomorrow, it is not next of tomorrow. That time is now. So use the time that God has given you right now. There is no best time like the now, right now. Listen, it's a fate of now. It is the God of now, Hebrews chapter 12. It is the God of now. It is the faith of now. We're not going to be waiting. No, it is the God of now. So as you declare it, as you say it, it happens right now. So we are going to be praying for those that are under the influence of addiction. Many, 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 many people, many, many families are broken today because of addiction. Many marriages are broken today because of addiction. Many homes are in shatter today because of addiction. Let us pray for those homes to be revived. Let us pray for those homes to be revived. From, let us pray for the glory of the Lord to come into that home, to come into the mind of those that have been afflicted. A addition is an afflicted that has, that has entangled the mind of people. When you see these people, you find them talking to themselves. Their minds are in prison. The addition controls them. Let us pray. To, let's pray with the word of truth, the word of life, the word that is spirit, the word that can never be held, the word that breaks through, the word that stretches and yet can never be stretched, the word that will penetrate into every mind, breaking them out, breaking them from that shackles of limitation, from that shackles of addition, breaking them from that gate, from where circumstances of addition has kept them, breaking them loose from that iron bars, breaking them loose from that iron bars, setting captivity free. Let us pray to the master with the word of spirit, with the word of life. Right now, join us. Let's pray together. Let's hold them in spirit and let's pray together in one spirit. In one, in one body, let's pray. Father, Lord Almighty, we give you thanks. We honor your holy word, Abba Father, King of glory. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We magnify your holy name, Abba Father. We exalt your holy name. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for your word that is at work in our life. We thank you for your presence that is at work in our life. We thank you for your word that continues to bring forth your mercy upon our life. Father, we thank you for your glory that never, that never fails. Your unfailing glory upon our life. We thank you for your unfailing love upon our lives. Father, we thank you for your word that is active, everly active in our life. We thank you for your faithfulness, for you are wonderful, Lord. You are awesome glory. Your word changed not. You remain the same as yesterday. Your word remains the same as today. Your word is everlasting, Abba Father. We pray for nations, King of Glory. We pray for nations, Abba Father. We say, let your word reign, Abba Father. We say, let your word reign in nations, Lord. We pray for leaders. We pray for departmental. We pray for government. We pray for president. We pray for all institutions. We pray for every departmental that is con that is constituted to serve humanity. Father, we pray for those that are being placed in the position of authority. Every directors, every CEO, every COO, every 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 directors in those companies. Father, we pray for them, O Lord, and we declare Your word. We declare Your glory. We say, let Your word reign. We say, let Your glory fill the head. We say, let Your glory fill the heart of those leaders, mighty God, we still let them be the fear of the Lord upon the heart of the leaders, Lord, that they will do it in respect of your word, in respect of your holiness, Lord, but that we pray against any will of flesh, every will of men that goes into the minds of the leaders, Lord, we pray against such the mighty name of this Christ, we say let your word, we say let your name, we say let your word reign, let your word be magnified, let your word reign in the heart of the leaders, Lord, that they will do according to your will, according to your faithfulness, according to your word, Lord, we say not Nothing shall separate your will. Nothing shall separate your will in the minds of the leaders, O Lord. So let the fear of the Lord comes upon the heart of the leaders. Let the fear of the Lord comes upon the minds of the leaders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Abba Father. We thank you, King of Glory. We thank you, Abba Father, for your word. We thank you, Abba Father. We thank you, King of Glory. Father, we pray for every hospital. We pray for all the staff, all the staff that are working in all the hospitals, O Lord. Those doctors, those 
matrons, those nurses, those that are serving, those that are cleaning, those that are making the attempt, ensuring that people who come to hospital are being served. Mighty God, we pray for their body to be strengthened. We pray for their heart to be strengthened. We we'll remove all weaknesses in their body, oh Lord. We we'll remove every form of hatred in their hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for all those, all those patients, oh Lord. All those that are placed in different ICU, all those that are placed in different world, those that are even placed in cancer world, those that are even placed in the, in the world that the, the, the medical practitioner has no help for them. Lord, we pray your word sets free, your word heals, your word delivers. Those that even medicinal, medicinal things cannot, cannot infect their body. Father, we pray that your word strengthen them. Your, your word strengthen their muscle, your word strengthen their body, your word revive their life, revive their soul, revive their health. Their body is being reformed, their body is being transformed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The glory, the unfailing glory of the Lord overshadow their life and begin to transform their health. Their health is being transformed, their body is being transformed. We pray for those that are in maternity world, Lord, those that are going through prolonged labors. Father, we pray. We pray for safe delivery upon those mothers. We pray for safe delivery, oh Lord. We cancel every prolonged labor, oh Lord. We cancel every section. We cancel every kind of things that is being done against the will of the Father. We pray for your will to manifest, Abba Father. We pray for your will to manifest. It is your will to prosper. It is your will to prosper. We pray their health is prospering. We pray their life is prospering just as their soul prosper. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we pray for those that are under the influence of addition, Abba Father. We thank you, Abba Father, for your word that has gone upon their life, upon their lives, into their minds, into their hearts, removing every form of addition that has held them back, removing and breaking them out from every form of addition that has held them prison. We pray against the addition that has held them back, addition of alcohol, addition of drugs, addition of gambling that has held them back. The light, the light of God set them free. The glory of the Lord set them free from that addition in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It it is a light, the light of God that is at work upon their life. It is a light, the light of God that is at work upon their body, setting them free, setting them free from that addition, removing them from that addition, breaking them out from that addition in the mighty name of this Christ. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Abba Father. We thank you, King of Glory. We pray for all those in orphanage centers, mighty God. We pray for the innocent boys and girls, those that the society are placed, those children that are being that there has been fetched, picked from the wayside, oh Lord, we pray for them, oh Lord. Those that have been abandoned by their parents, Lord God Almighty, we pray for them, Abba Father. We declare your word, we declare your glory, we declare your praise upon them, oh Lord. We pray for those that are working with them, oh Lord. Those those are, that are working in orphanage centers, we pray for their heart to be strengthened and we come against, we repel every heart of corruption from their heart. We repel every heart, every heart and every mind of corruption. Every corrupt mind is repelled from their mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God Almighty, your prayers break that yoke of syndicate of human trafficking that is ongoing nationwide. We pray, mighty God, that your glory fill this earth, Lord God Almighty. Your glory fill this earth. My libra de shukure, je predira, je predure, je disha kuteli we thank you for restoring life. We thank you for restoring homes. We thank you for restoring marriages, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for the life of the boys and girls, the learners, mighty God. We thank you for the life of the youth, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for the life being strengthened, Lord. We thank you for your word that continues to hide them. Libra kushe, eshekuta e libra, eshedira libra kure, zebra dishka, zebra dira, zebra dishe kute libri yende, zebra kadura, zebra kadishe, elebra disha kute libri yende, rakushte radere nakura and the libra. Alebre dura lisha kute, zebra kadishka, zebra kadure, zebra dishe kita libra, eshe tibra, eshe dure, eshe dibra disha lure ente, zebra kadura, zebra kadure, zebra dishe kita libri ende, ibra kushta ibri ende, ibra dishe kute libri ende, elebre dura, elibra dishka, elibra disha kute libra, eshe te libra, eshe te dure, eshe kadira libra ende. We give you glory, Abba Father, we thank you, Lord God Almighty. We bless your holy name. We lift your name up, O oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Abba Father. We exalt your name. Be thou magnified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We keep God the glory. We thank God. We bless God. Glory to our Master. Glory to our King. Glory to our Savior. Glory to our Lord. Glory to our Lord. Glory to our Lord, glory to our Savior. Amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, best of yours. Thank you so much. Thank you for praying for us. 
Uh, thank you for praying with us. Uh, thank you for allowing yourself uh, to be used in ushering the word. Thank you for the grace that has been manifest. Thank you for the glory. Thank you. We thank God for uh, allowing the glory of the Father to come into your life. Meaning, by you offering yourself, you offer yourself, you give what you have, you give yourself, you give yourself, meaning you gave yourself for the Holy Spirit to take over. So thank you so much for praying for us. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for allowing yourself, your mouth to be the word that usher the word into the life of all our sundries. Right now, as we have declared this word in truth and spirit, many lives have been saved. Many lives have been rescued. Many lives have been restored. Many who are sick have been restored in their body. Many who are sick have been restored. We see restoration comes upon life. Restoration comes upon body. We see life is being restored. We see health has been restored. All to the glory of God. The unfailing glory of the Father. And for that, we say to God, be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the viewers. Amen. It is a Bible session, meaning Bible class. Every Monday we come together and we share the word. We share the word, we share the word, what we have freely received from the Father. So I want us to go to uh, Isaiah 59, quickly there. Uh, it, this uh, is the 30th day of the month of May. Uh, the month of remaining in his presence. There's one thing about this thing about the uh, the theme of the month. It mustn't pass because the month passed. You must remain in his presence. You must not stop. You must not stop uh, from remaining in his presence. When we began, we spoke about Job. Job went walk out of his presence in Job chapter 3. Hence, he, he, he was under the curse. If one remains Presence. The fullness of the Father comes. You remain in His fullness, meaning you will not experience lack, you will not experience trouble, you will not, because you remain in a way lack cannot function. You see, get to a place where lack stop being lack. You get to a place where division stop being division. You got to a place where trouble. Stop being trouble. You go to a place where issues stop being issues. You go to a place where problems stop being problems. Because you've gotten to a place where you cannot be helped nor be taught. Because this is what this is what Jesus was saying in John, John uh, uh, chapter 16, when he was speaking to uh, his disciples best from verse 33. See, there will be trials, there will be temptation. That you will face. Meaning there will be trials, there will be temptation that you will face. But he went for that to say, Cheer up, I have overcome. Now, for you to see what overcome is you remaining in his presence. Is you remaining in his presence. Because when you are in his presence, your daily life comes from the presence that you are in. I want you to understand this. When you are in his presence, your life derived from his presence. So listen to this, Isaiah 59, from verse 1. It says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. It says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. Nor is ear too dull to ear. The arm of the Lord is an outstretch. It's not too short. It's outstretch. It covers. It covers. It covers. He said, He said, Under your refuge will I seek refuge. Under your refuge, under your hand, under your mighty outstretched hand. 
under your mighty outstretched will I seek refuge. Now, if you are, if you are in his presence, you, you've taken, you've, you've seek refuge. You are, you've, you've taken a, a, a dominion, a dominion of which you cannot be harmed. In any way, he says, he says, with your eye, you will see those who try. With your eyes, you will see those who try. Those meaning those who try to harm you, those who try to cause you to fail, those who try to limit you. You see, with your eyes, you will see, meaning their efforts, their efforts all jointly put together, instead of it to prevail, you will see that nothing from fashion done, perpetrated against you can prosper. It says here, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to say, nor is ear too dull to hear. Now, some will say, but is the God not hearing when I pray? Does the God not hear when I pray? I have been praying to God. I have been praying to the Father. I have been praying to the Lord God Almighty. Is, it, is, is, is the Lord not hearing me when I pray? Is the Lord, does the God, God does, not, God does not hear me when I pray? No, who told you? He, hear, he hears you when you pray. The question is, do you, do you pray according to his will? Do you pray according to his will? That is the question. If he's, if he's, if, if you're asking if he hears, if he can hear you, of course he hears you. However, do you pray according to his will? His will is you to obey his word. His will is to prosper you, not to harm you. So I love you, Master. Now let's let's read there quickly. He says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is here too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. It says your iniquities. Have separated you from his presence. See, he says, um, uh, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. One must qualify for him or she not to not, not, not to be harmed. One must qualify for he or she not to be touched. You see, we use Job as reference again. What made him to qualify? Why the why God when God when God presence was was uh, was taken away from him meaning it, 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 God permitted to show to show the enemy that you know nothing of this fellow this fellow that you thought that if my if my presence is taken away from him he will cause God for you to know that you know nothing about him now God made that happen God God gave. The enemy in the platform. Don't give the enemy the platform. Now, this also happened with, with Christians today. Not just Job. Not just Job. The things that we go through in our daily life, they are a testing to improve our faith. Your, te your, your, your faith must be tested. Your faith, if your faith is here to be tested, then you are yet to become a Christian. Your faith must be tested to actually prove to you the words, the word of what lives in you. Many has no idea, many has no knowledge, many have no wisdom, no understanding of the words, the word of the grace that saves them. Ephesians chapter two, verse says, by grace you are saved. But that grace what more than your life? That grace is what, it, it's what more than your life. So for you to understand this, you go through daily, daily trials. Your trials could be from your place of work. Your trials could be from, from schools. Your trial could be from your home. Your trial could be from your marriage. Your trial could be from your, from your children. These are the things that you go through daily in your life. But now, one, 
who do not know sin. What, what made you not to know? Because what made Job to know for him to acknowledge and say when he was presented with temptation to say, no, only God give, only God take. And he, 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 he did not speak out of fear, neither does he spoke out of misery. There was boldness, there was confidence. Because you could see, you could see when you read, when you read Job 1 and Job 2, you will see the man was in, in severe pain. The man was in severe affliction. He was afflicted with all we can. And, and these diseases and this infirmity that we talk about today, he, were, he, were, he was afflicted with such. He was afflicted with such. But still, he refuses to deny. He refuses to deny. He refuses to do that. How about, how about the one whom, whom the um, glorious master said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times, three times. Three times you will deny me. And when that hour came, he denied the master thrice, thrice. What was the difference now? He, he knew because the master said this will happen and he, he refuses. He said, no, this will not happen. He said, no, this will not happen. No, this will not happen. Ah, ah, this will not happen. This will not happen. And when an hour came, what happened? We saw how, how he denied the master. Twice he denied the master. He denied the master. Twice he denied the master. But when the master told him, he just stopped acting out. Meaning he was pretending. Pretentious. He was pretending. Peter stopped acting out. Now you will deny me. Stop pretending or you will deny me. And he was, no. I will die for you. I will die for you. When the time came for you to die for him, as you have said, you will. The true nature of God. And this is why many walk, but not in his presence. Many walk, but not with his presence. Yet you pray, yet you fast, yet you, you, you read the scripture, but you are not in his presence. Why? He says here, listen to this. This is a lesson. This is a lesson. Listen to this blessing of yours. Isaiah 59. Verse 2, say, but your iniquities have separated you from God. Your iniquities, iniquity is sin, sin. What is sin? Disobedience. How did this sin come about? How did this sin come through this one? Genesis, Genesis 3. For one man disobedience, sin enter. So when you when you do against the will of God, that's disobedience. That is rebellious. We were we read about rebellious. We we touched it yesterday during the course of the service. When 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 someone begins to do against the will of God, knowing this is what you are supposed to do, but you chose not to. You are being rebellious against God. You choose to be rebellious against God, against, against the command of God. We read Deuteronomy 28 yesterday. The next chapter is Deuteronomy 29 and Deuteronomy 30. Then you hear the causes of disobedience, the elements of disobedience, what happened, what transpired. Yet, one we assume, but I'm in the presence of God. Why this so much trouble? Why this so much trouble? There are trouble that is meant to come. That trouble is for elevation. And there are trouble that will come when one disobeys. That trouble will take one away. Such so will become like a, a washing flood that carries you out, out from his presence. What David says in Psalm 51, verse 2, say, cast me not away from your presence. In Psalm 139, in Psalm 118, say, 
What can separate me from your love? What is it that can separate me from your love? What is it that can separate me from your love? Apostle Paul came again in Romans 8. When you take it from verse 27 to 32, he says, What is it? What is the actual thing? Even go, go further to 36. So what is it that can separate, separate me from your love? Would it hardship? Would it be hardship? What? Is it hardship? Is it what kind of trouble? Is it sickness? Is it poverty? What kind? What can warrant you? What can cause you to, to become a disobedient? What can cause you to disobey the will of God? What can cause you to disobey his word? What can cause you not to keep his word? What is it that can cause you? What, what, what sort of hindrances can warrant you not to keep his word? So what, what made Abraham, what made him not to keep? Because he was stood. He was stood. That, no, no matter what, no matter what, don't eat from that. He was told, no matter what, that one, don't eat from that one. No matter what, he was told. He was told. So no matter how anyone comes and, and begin and, be, and begin to sweeten things, sin is sin. No matter how, how, how somebody begins to come to you and say, no, but you are not the one doing it. You are not the one saying it. You are just an observer. No, it is disobedience. Don't do this. Don't say that. That's the message. Don't act that way. Don't act this way. That's the message. Now, someone will come to you and say, it's that it, it says, but you are only there you, as an observant. No. You are part. You become part of that. There is no observant. You become part of that. To remain in his presence is to allow his fullness to take our dominion, take our thoughts, Take our thought. You see, allow your thought because it says for 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 you to uh, for you to attain. You know, uh, um, as I said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So you need to allow his thoughts to take over. Allow his thoughts to take over your your entire thought. Allow his thoughts to take over. It's true submission. You must well learn to be submissive. Learn to be what? Submissive. Total submission. Not just submission like what you saw with Peter in the, in, in the, in the first instance. Because after that, Peter now gave, he, he gave his all. After that, he gave his all. But Jesus knew that was going to happen. That's why he told him before it happened. He knew this was going to happen. That's why he told him, this is your faith. This is your faith. But it, 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 his true faith, his true faith was for, it to, it was the rock. It was the rock. That was his true faith, the rock. The rock. But for him to enter into his true faith, submission was needed. Submission does not work on or work with pride. Submission works with humility. Submission never works with pride. When you are full of pride, you don't understand what submission is. When pride is in your face and in your head, you have no knowledge what, what is the meaning of submission. That's why you find yourself wanting. Your life is circling, same spots. Even though it seems as if it's promising, but no, it's still circling. Where is your submission? Where is your humility? Listen to this. I read again. Isaiah 59, from verse 1. It says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities, your iniquities, he didn't say iniquity, he said your iniquities, 
your iniquities have separated you from your God. So your sins have hidden his face from you. So where is princess the risky party? Yet you are not, you don't feel liberated. Where is princess? There is freedom, yet you don't understand the freedom. You don't see the freedom. You find yourself still in captive. You find yourself still in captive. You are struggling with things that you're not even supposed to struggle with in the first place. You struggle hard to go through things you're not even supposed to struggle with. But because of you not submitting to his will, but because of you not be obedient to his word, because of you not keep his word, you find yourself struggling with the same issue that you've been praying and you've been fasting. Jesus said, never pray against your enemy, rather love them. To you as a believer, you first of all pause and ask, how can I pray for the one that is persecuting me? How can I pray for the one that is plotting against me? How can I pray for the one that is scheming against me? But now the Father said, pray for them, even though they hated you, even though they believe to you, even though they schemed against you, even though they plot against you, even though they are planning, even when their thought is evil towards you, the Father says, pray for them. Why is it so difficult for you to obey the word that the Father gave. Didn't the Father forgive you of your own ways? Didn't the Father forgive you of your own transgression? Why is it why is it so difficult for you to forgive those? But you pray the prayer, forgive us, as we daily forgive those who transgress against us, those who sin against us. Trying against the sin. Now, those who sin against you, now you, 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 you ask for forgiveness from the Father, but yet you find it difficult to let go. You find it difficult to let go. And now, because you find it difficult to let go now, that thought has become an island. It has become an idol in your mind. It has become an idol in your mind. It now begins to control you. It controls you. Now, as it controls you, you are already eating. You, the, you are no longer in the presence of the Father. Now, you are eating away from the Father. You are eating away, meaning you are cast out. You are cast out. Cast out of the Spirit. Disobedience welcomes sin. And sin made men to be cast away from the presence of God. Because they were cast, and they were cast from, from God's presence. The presence of God was in the Garden of Eden. Do you understand this? Place of the presence of God was in the Garden of Eden. There, when God was busy creating, Adam was standing. The presence of God was just everywhere that even Adam don't, don't know when God comes or when God goes. He has no knowledge. He has no knowledge. Why? The presence of God was Imagine, imagine, find yourself in the in the field in the field of crops. You find yourself in the field of crops. When you look, you find everywhere. You don't even know where is the exit. You don't know where is the entrance. You just find yourself in the field of crops. Find yourself in the field of crops. So he is in that garden of Eden, meaning the meaning, meaning the light, kind of like the presence of God, the light, the light that can never be dimmed. Was there? It was there. It was there. It was here. Now the moment, the moment disobedience played a role. Because it was supposed to say, now listen, this God says we shouldn't eat. Even when he mentioned the enemy, the enemy spoke through, the enemy spoke through the wife, Eve, and said. Surely you will not die. Surely you will not die. This was someone who did not know death before. This was someone who just know about life. Because he was giving word of life to animals. He was giving a word of life. So he was speaking of life. He did not know death. But as soon as disobedience entered, the knowledge of death 
comes. Sin came into him and sin had access. And why? Darkness cannot comprehend the light. So because of now your disobedience, because of now your, your sinful nature, you cannot be in the presence of the light. Light exposes, light exposes. So light exposes them. The moment that happened, the, the presence of God exposes, exposes them. It meaning they, they, there's a knowledge now, there's a knowledge of, of, of disobedience. Now they went and what hide. They went and hide, hide. When the sun, when God was coming, he heard the sun like, like a gong, goom. They went into hiding. They went into hiding. They, Listen to this. I want you to. I want. I want we are not reading Genesis chapter three, Genesis chapter four. We're not reading Genesis chapter three, Genesis chapter four. We are reading Isaiah fifty nine. But we are taking. We are taking the world from in the beginning and taking it into the present, into the future. This is what you should know today that we are made through this world. Even though we came from our mother's. We are made of this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So I want you to listen to this. Psalms 59, Psalm 59, verse 2. Say, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. I'm using the NIV version. Your sins have hidden his face from you. Your sins have hidden his face from you. Where can we go from your presence? One that is disobedience, that sin enters into this life. Such one, that sin have separated you from his presence, from his face. Meaning his face is not on you. Imagine living a life where the face of God is not upon you. What do you think will happen to you? Distress, calamity, stress, the life of, the life of failing, the life of failure. Disappointment straight back. Such is the life that one whom the face of God is not upon will be experiencing. As so, this was the case of so. First king and second king. This was the case of so. Because in, in, in second Samuel, when, 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 when he was told of what to do, he was told of what to do. Oh, first Samuel 18. He was told of what to do. Don't, do not spare the Amalekite. Do not spare the Amalekite. That was an instruction. That was a command. That was a command that was given to him. And now, what did he do? He began to do as he pleases. You know, you know, you know, you know, you'll be given instruction on how you should do things. You've been told, this is, this is how, this is how you're going to pray. This is the, the Bible verses to read. This is what to meditate upon. And you, you looked at it. Probably it did not suit your emotions or it's not what you were expected. Or it's not what you actually want. Then now you now begin now to do the one that you want. Pray the way you want. Pray the way you like. Read the verses that you like, not to the one that you are presented to, not the one that you have been instructed to, not the one that you are being given to, but the one that you now like. What is happening there? Yes, you are reading, but not what you are given to read, to read from. Yes, you are praying, but not what you were given the uh, prayer points to pray with. But yet, yet you are praising, but not what you were instructed to do. Because the shepherd that gave you this instruction, speak is a representative of God on earth. Shepherd that representing God on earth. That's what it means. Jeremiah chapter 3, read Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. A shepherd from my heart, speak, speak. And that's why, that's why you need to understand also, you see, when also first somewhere, when, 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 uh, when, First and second somewhere, right? 
when the uh, um, soil fill, when soil fill, soil disobedience that brought about sin caused the face of God from away the, to depart the from his life. Immediately, Saul was facing challenges that he never faced while he was anointed to be a king. He was, he was in turmoil. He was restless. Demon was busy toying around with him. He is for one pain to the other, one sickness to the other, one calamity to the other. It was just calamity after calamity. But as, as one that is in obedience, is grace after grace. Grace after grace. But one that is in disobedience is calamity after calamity. Tension after tension, pressure after pressure, sickness after sickness. That's, that's, that was the life Saul was living. That was the life Saul was living because he was no longer, he was no longer in the presence of God. He was no longer in the presence of God. You see, one that is not in the presence of God, if one does not remain in his presence, you, listen, an avalanche, an avalanche, avalanche, avalanche of evil will, will be so on, on such a person, on such a person, immediately. But now, if you are in the presence of God, if you're in the presence of God, they will, you will only be seen with your own eye. Whatever projection, Whatever form of attack that was used against you, instead of you to be touched, no, you will only be seen with your eye. How they how how they failed and how they will keep failing. Without you raising a finger, without you raising a voice, without you raising a prayer, just love them. <laughs> so now, what happened with Saul? Let's of yours. So disobedience. So disobedience caused. The face of God to be hidden from him. He began to search. He began to search. He went through all kind of places. He went through Sangomas, went, did all rituals. As if God is seen, or God is obtained, or God is uh, uh, revived, or God is called through those means. Yes, yes, all power belongs to God, but not, not those means, not from below, not from below. Not from below. Not from below. You don't call God with darkness. No. He's a God of light. Darkness bow to light. So now, when he failed to get what he, what he wants for himself, he, he became he became what he became aggress, aggressive he became aggressive the, the, the thought of killing had already taken over his mindset his mindset has been has been has been set on killing whosoever that will step as a king now who is coming now now you want to see now remember the grace was no longer there the presence of God was no longer there now what is what is it back what was it backing on human strength ability he was now banking on ability, the gift of strength. That was what he was bank, banking on. That's why he saw the light that was that used to be in him was on David. Because he saw favor, 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 favor. The, the sort of light that he once experienced, the sort of grace that he once experienced, what took him out of that grace was disobedience. Disobedience. Okay, did he confess? Did he confess? Imagine if he had confessed when he was told of what, what he did, when he was told of what we did, what did what did, how did he take how did he spoke to uh, Prophet Samuel? He did what was wrong. I, I have to feed my soldiers, I have to feed my men, my men has to feed. The only pride was speaking, not humility. Pride was speaking to him. Pride was what was communicating to him when Prophet Samuel said to him, This is not the instruction that God gave to you. No, I have to feed my army. I have to feed my soldier. Who gave you that army? We saw Jesus coming in John 17 saying, God, this is the one you gave to me. 
the father, this is the one you give to me, Jesus Christ, saying to the father, this, you, you, the ones that you gave to me. So who gave Saul the army that he's boasting of, the army that made him to kill that fat cow and those chicken and to keep women for himself? When the institution was slaughter every living thing, living org organisms, human, animals, everything must be slaughtered, meaning wipe the slate clean. An instruction. But he now, he, 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 he fine tune that instruction. Disobedience. 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 Amen. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Jesus. So now, the moment, the moment this happened is like now, the face of God was no longer, it was hidden from me. It was hidden from me. But now, God mercy, God still wants his mercy, God still wants his grace, God still wants his presence in Israel. And God found David. Now, David was chosen. That's why God called him a man after my own heart. A man after my own heart. I want you to understand this. A man after my own heart. So we we, we, we mention a shepherd. David was a shepherd among sheep. He was a shepherd among sheep. Among his eldest brother, he was the one tending to the needs of the family. Meaning what David was doing was feeding the family, yet he was the youngest. What David commits himself to, his commitment was yielding and producing for his family, for his father, for his brothers. But yet he was, he was, he was one of the youngest, second to the youngest. That's why when the day, when the, the day of him to be anointed came, someone called all, all the all the men, all the men. And he was, he, was, he was being carried away by the physique of those that he saw. Surely, the God's anointing is upon you because of the way you look. God does not count on your, on your heart of the appearance. God does not count about your age. Present yourself as you are. Let humility define you. Let you be known with humility. Let obedience be your yardstick. Obedience to his word, obedience to his command, obedience to his message, obedience to his teaching is how you must be known. By so doing, you are reflecting the inner Christ that is in you. You are reflecting. You see, become, a, become Christ's reflector because Christ is the word. So when you, when you allow obedience to define you, People will begin to see Christ in you. And with Christ, all things are possible. When, where there is limitation, because of Christ in you, it is not your own ability. Because of Christ in you, Apostle Paul says, I, I am grace. He said, I can do all things, everything, 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 not, not some things. I can do all things. Through Christ Jesus, there's a grace there that strengthens him, meaning the grace of Christ in him causes him to do all, to do what, what, what enablement of human strength could not do. So why so failed? David was prospering. Why? He was in the presence of God. So David, before he further ahead to war, David will ask of the, he will ask, he will take permission from the one that is sick prayers, from the prince of God. Say, God, can I go now? Really? He, he said, God, can I go? He was speaking audibly. God, can I go now? God, can I go now? God, can I go now? Wait until you hear my son. Wait until you hear my son. Is a time for me to go. Wait until you hear my son. Now, when that sound is said, meaning the presence of God has already gone. Gone ahead of him to level, to level, to level mountain of human obstacle, to smitten the Philistine before him. So when he goes, he speak, there will be no, no hand will be raised towards him. Imagine, imagine, imagine you are going to war or you are going to a battle and your, your opponent that are sworn against you, that say, when I see you, 
I will smith in your head. I will chop off your head. I will do this. Now, when the time for battle arrived, when the battle of the time come, the battle time came, and this person is looking like looking, looking, looking at you like a zombie, cannot even raise his or her hand against you. And the person is looking at you, can't raise his hand against you. Then you are, then 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 you you you, you come and you did the, and you did the needful. What causes that person not to raise hand against you? What causes that person not to raise his or her hand against you? Because you cannot be touched. So the presence of the Father goes ahead of him. That's why every battle that he went in, it was victorious. It was what? It was victorious. It was victorious. Now see, see the difference between him, why he was king, and when Saul was king. Remember, Saul sought after his life to kill him on numerous occasions. But, but when the opportunity was presented to David, when the opportunity was presented to David, what did David did? David did not act like Paul. David allowed in humility. What did he say? I will not touch of God's anointed. Meaning, he still honors, he still honors, he still honors. But the presence of God was no longer with Saul. The presence of God was no longer with Saul. But humility speak for David right there, saying, I will not touch that of God's anointed. I will not touch that of God's anointed. That's why you must be careful with the speeches you are making against men of God. You must be careful with the speeches you are making against women of God. You must be careful with the speeches you are making against those you regard that they are not in. They are not, they are not, they are not going to But be careful with the words that you're using and speaking against them. Because you might be sowing into your own life unknowingly. You might be so into where they were now because of you not knowing. So be careful of the utterances that you are speaking. Are you before you are you, you, you used to be the, the, the greatest man of God, the greatest woman of God? Ah, huh? you are no more. You are nothing. You are nothing. You are nothing. You do not know the cross the person is carrying. You speak because you no longer see what you used to see. You know, because you don't see what you used to see. Now you spoke out of ordinary. You never had a relationship with this person to know if this person was truly called of God or not. But you spoke because of what you used to see. You don't see them anymore. David says, I'm not going to touch. I'm not going to touch. I'm not going to touch that of God's anointed. God of, of God anointed. I'm not going to touch that of God anointed. I Meaning previously, Saul used to be of God's anointed. But disobedience, disobedience caused the face of God to be hidden from him. So many today face similar things in their life. Many today they face similar challenges. You might, you might, you've, you've Disobedience in, in, in one way of your in one way or the other during the course of your of, of you growing as a child of God, your love for God, and you and disobedience enter your heart. You disobeying his word, disobeying his messages, disobeying the, the command that he gave to you. And now, because of that disobedience, the face of God is not being hidden from you. And yet you go to church every Sunday, you go to church every week, you pay your tithe, you pay your dues, you offer. Yet the favor of the Lord is far from you. What 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 made that to happen? I Meaning you have to what you have to sit down and examine your life. Examine your life is you checking yourself. How did you get to this level that you are in? How has this come to be? You've given your best, you've given your time. But God says, is the rewarder of obedience. So, I, were you truly obedient to his word? Were you truly obedient to his word? You see, when Adam said to Eve, God said, we should not eat of this. And Eve replied, but now you need to understand, was it Eve that was really speaking or was it the enemy that was speaking through Eve? He says, Surely you will not die, but you will be like God. Look at what came into his mind. Be like God. Well, were you not like God already? Because you were naming after God. Were you not like God already? 
You see, you see, learn to be content with what God has given to you. It's a lesson. It's a lesson that one must derive from all of this. See, learn to be content with what God has given to you, because the privilege has already was given to you because you are the you are the privilege to name. You are the one to name the cat to become a cat. You are the one to name a dog to become a dog. That was a privilege. That was an honor. You were the privilege to be called the first prophet on this earth. So what more can make you, makes you want to say you want to be like God without you not entering into his obedience. Rather, you allow disobedience. You see, in your Christian daily life, when the trials that you are facing come, when the temptation, temptation arises, this is where now your obedience will be tested. This is how your obedience now will be tested. Your obedience now will be tested through this. Will you stand and say, no, this is, of not, this is not of God. I stand by what I say. I know a father. I know the Christ. Who stand? in the world that God gave to him. You understand this? Temptation came. Temptation came because, I mean, where, where he was invited, where he was invited is where the whole world was looking at. The whole world see this place as the most holy place. That is the mindset of society. But now, when the camera and the and, and the mic was presented to him and to say to deny this grace, no, no, no. Because if you are of God, you will know. You will know this. Where is this coming from? You will know if you are of God or you are not of God. You know. Say by my fruit, say by their fruit, you shall know them. Say by their fruit, you shall know them. So what is the fruit that you see for you to know? When you are doing this, where is the love? When you are presenting, you are presenting to sell your image, to sell your name, to sell as if you are selling the brand. Where is the love? We know Galatians chapter 5. From verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit, what you will see to know those that are of God, those that are with God, those that are in God, this is what you should see to know. This is what, this is what it should be written. This is what they should reflect. This should be the character that must speak to your most holy emotion to say, yes, I've seen the Lord. So if any of those that you know, you read, I mean, we know it, we all know it, Galatians chapter 5. You can start from 19 to, to read there, but verse 22, 23, 24 speaks. Patience, love, faithfulness, perseverance, endurance, kindness, gentleness, humility, humility. Humility. So, see, see David was favored. Humility was speaking for David. He, he had humility. Saul had pride. Saul had pride. When the message came to Saul, this is what you have done. You have done against the will of God. Pride immediately took over. What about my soldiers? What about my army? What about my boys? How are they going to fed? But when Moses, when, uh, pardon me, when David committed adultery, and Prophet Natal came. And Prophet Natal came to him. A certain man have done this, and a certain man rob a poor a poor man of money, and rob a poor man of joy. David was en he was enraged, and he said to Prophet Natal, "Point to me the direction. Point to me who is this person. I will send forth my men to have him slaughtered." Ah, this is your thought, right? Now, they say, you are that man. You are that man. Immediately, his countenance changed. The knowledge of disobedience, the knowledge of the evil that he has, that he did in the darkness. You remember, he did it without no one seeing him. He made sure that his, his servant 
had no knowledge. He made, he made sure that the son of that knowledge, he did it without their knowledge. Nothing you think you are doing without anyone seeing you. Nothing is hidden from God. Nothing is hidden from God. Nothing. God sees. God knows. He is all-knowing. He is all-seeing. He knows all. There is nothing that passes without God not having the knowledge of it. Nothing. So now, when David did what he did, the deeds of his, the, the, the consequence of his deeds now came. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. He immediately, immediately humbled himself before the prophecy. I have sinned against God. I have sinned against God. But Saul never said, I sinned against God. And the, Saul was saying, oh, what, what, what will my army eat? I did what I did because it was necessary. No. The, uh, the, 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 the command of God is more than necessary. It's more than enough. So, so obedience, obedience to word, obedience to the word, it not only saves one, but also it puts one into where God wants you to be. It puts you into what? Into the fullness. You see, uh, the intention of God has always been for us to attain the Christ. In order for us to attain the Christ, obedience is needed. Obedience is needed. Obedience indeed. That's why the life of Jesus remained a story for us to, to hold on and to live in with. Because for 30 years, here was Jesus. For 30 years, he knew, he knew what his mission on earth was. He knew what he had came to offer for on earth. So he waited on the fixed date of the Father. Patiently waited on the fixed date of the Father. He was not in any way, in any way thinking of uh, when would that time come. He was, in, he was in, not in any way in a hurry. He was not in any way pushing for what was going to happen at the, at the fixed date of the Father to happen at the age of 20 or at the age of 25. No. He patiently waited for 30 good years, three decades, three decades he waited. Now, when the time of the father came now, the father was delighted, the father was pleased. What, what made the father to be pleased? Obedience that he was in the son. So when the spirit of the father wants to come, the father wants to see obedience in you. Through the pains that you are going through, you did not confess no other thing but him. Through the trials that you are going through, you do not confess anything but him. Through the suffering that you are going through, you refuse to confess anything but him. Such obedience delight God. Such obedience delight God. Why? Obedience takes one into intimacy. What is intimacy? Sleeping. Sleeping. Being next to God. is true obedience. Obedience is sleeping next to God. So God was delighted. The father was delighted. So yes, for a good 30 years, he was a son of a carpenter. He was called in different homes to come and nail the cupboard. Knowing fully well that was not, that was not his purpose. Knowing fully well that that was not his purpose, but he was doing it wholeheartedly. You may find yourself doing something you never dreamt of. Your patience is needed for you to be tested, for you to be tested, in order for you to attain, reach where God is taking you to. You may not have begun where God is taking you to. Your patience, your perseverance, your endurance will be tested for it's a pre preparation, preparing you, taking you into where the dominion of God wants you to be. So you are in a hurry. To make money as a minister of God, you dream of cars, you dream of ex not just cars, but exotic cars. You dream of exotic cars. The way you the way you think about it, the way you think about exotic cars, you're a minister of the gospel, you are thinking of exotic cars, you are thinking of the luxuries of houses. Matthew 28. Verse 18, you shove it out of your mind. 
not following the instruction that was given to you. Not following the instruction that was given to you. Say, go ye into the world. Make disciples. Make disciples. Make disciples. And your excuses, we are still in lockdown. We are still on lockdown. And the churches have not opened. As if church has ever been closed. As if church has ever been closed. You refuse you refuse to spread this aroma of life that you freely receive from the Father. You refuse to graciously give as you have graciously received freely from the throne of mercy. And you refuse to share what you have freely received and what you are made to equally share unto others. You are giving excuses. That's disobedience. That's disobedience. And when disobedience comes, one is hidden from the face of God. One that is in disobedience, the, such a person will be experiencing all kind of trouble, all kind of trouble in life. Meaning the trouble that will befall such a person, such a trouble will begin to speak into that person that you, your ways is, not, is no longer the way of God. And your thoughts and your desire is no longer that of God. That what will you do to return back to him? Because he's more than willing. He said, return back to him. He says, my people is more than we, if my people are willing, say, it's more than it's more than willing to not only heal you. It's, not, it's, it's, it's more than willing not only to heal you, but to return, to return transformation in your land. To return transformation in your in your family, to return transformation, meaning the glory that is unfailing, you or you are going to be experiencing. That's why each time David David goes into his most secret place and and pray for forgiveness, David received an enlightening. He received what an enlightening. So as he was receiving enlightening, he began to write. He began to write because what he received made him to write. What he had received made him to write. So we are enjoying Sam's today uh, because of what? Because of his obedience. Because of the obedience that, that was on him. And now when the Spirit of God came upon him, he began to write. Meaning the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God that was upon him now, led him to write. Led him to write that. Sharing, sharing, sharing. Imagine, 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 imagine when when he wrote, I can just imagine now when he when he was writing Psalms 8, that he was saying, Wow, what was thought of men? Oh God, though made a little lower than angel, yet giving authority over the works of your hand. Hmm? Made a little lower than angel, yet all authority in heaven and on earth has been given. Meaning you have access. To access files that can never be accessible. You've been given access to access lives that seems not to be unaccessible. But you have been given such an access. You have been given such an access. True or your obedience. Say, pray, and I will give to you what is unknown. You say, well, praying is calling. And this is the true form of receiving what it means in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. The true form of it say, Call unto me, I will show to you things unknown, things unheard. Through your true obedience, you will you will receive, you will receive what is unknown, you will receive what is on earth. True, true obedience. So what happened here? Uh, Psalm, Psalm, uh, uh, Isaiah 59. Let's just read here again. Isaiah 59, we were reading from Isaiah 59. From verse 1. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. Nor is here too dull to hear. His ear is not too short to hear. Nor is here too dull to hear. He says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sin, your ways, your disobedience, they have separated you from your God. So your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt. Your fingers with guilt. 
your hands stained with blood? What have you been giving with your hand? What have you been speaking with your hand? How many have, how many people have you led to Christ? Because if you're not leading to if you're not leading people that you have an encounter with to Christ, whom are you leading them to? Because there is two things present before us: life, death. Life is found in Christ. Death is found in disobedience. So are you giving obedience? Are you giving life? Are you giving the Christ with your hand? Or are you giving causes? Are you giving hatred with your hand? See, the fingers is rid it of what guilt. It's easy for you to point. Is that? Is him? Is that? Is the cause? Is the cause? Is the cause? You know, you know, this has been something that is ongoing in, in, in Africa, in Africa, and also all over the world. I'm mean, just going to use the Africa, it's all over the world. He pointing at QZ finger, very easy. Look at just three months ago, what did you witness? Just a point of accused finger, and there is war, and war broke out. War broke out now between the two Eastern Europeans, and, and they've been bombing one another all along. Just mere by mere accused finger, just by mere accused finger. So the guilt that many has caused in the world, in the society today, by mere accusing fingers. Just imagine the guilt. Just imagine the cause. Just imagine the chaos that has been ongoing today. It says here, it says here, your lips have spoken falsely. Your lips have spoken what? Falsely. And your tongue, mm, your tongue mutters wicked things. Your tongue mutters wicked things. So no one calls for justice. No one calls for justice. No one pleads a case with integrity. No one pleads a case with, with integrity. They rely on empty arguments. They utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. It says here, I, I'm going to repeat again. For your hands are stained with blood. Your fingers with guilt. Your lips have spoken falsely, and your tongue mutters wicked things. Your tongues mutters wicked things. Now, when you are called to intercede, bless if you see, lay aside elementary things, lay aside your worry. Because Jesus has said in Matthew 6, said, who among you has worry hard to ease our life? So lay it aside now. See it as a word. See yourself as being privileged to be called to intercede. Now, when you're called to pray, now to pray to others, to pray for nations, to pray for society, to pray for innocent children, boys and girls, to pray for those in hospital that are sick in the body. And now you are beginning to think of yourself now. You are beginning to think of yourself. You begin now to pray for yourself now. But in this, among the saints, there's an agreement. There's an agreement in the gathering. There was an agreement. There's an agreement of prayer that we agreed to pray. But now, hear you selfishly now. Now you are muttering first. Your lips now speak first. What you mut what you mutter is vanity. Meaning, what comes out of your mouth is vanity. It does not bring praise when it goes up. It goes and it fades. But now you could see when someone is doing when someone behaves in that manner. You see this discontent in such a person. How, how, how you see the saints after prayers, you find satisfaction, you find contentment. When you look at their countenances, meaning their faces, what you see, happiness, you see joy flowing from them, you see them laughing, you see smile, you don't see heaviness, meaning they forgot about their issue, they forgot about themselves, and now as they pray for others, as they commit and they dedicate themselves onto the well-being of others, now the spirit of truth, the spirit that is of all knowing, the spirit that searches yet cannot be searched, had already gone also to meet their needs, to meet their needs. Because of what? Obedience. Because of what? Obedience. 
So I love you, Master. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Master. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So no one calls for justice, best for. No one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments. They utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. When you want to conceive disobedience, obviously, you are going to give birth to evil. So conceive disobedience. And he gave birth to evil. He was seeking after David to kill him. He wanted to have him killed. He tried every means. But because the presence of God was with David, David was only seeing with his eye. David was only seeing with his eye. And David also could have fallen the victim also of that conceiving of evil if he had not made the world that he made. Because the evil was presented for him to conceive. Many, many are conceiving evil daily without them even not knowing. You conceive hatred. You're going to give birth to evil now. You conceive evil daily, daily, daily. The world is not even getting interest anymore because you are pregnant with evil. When the, when the presentation of conceiving of evil was presented to David, he saw was helpless. Saw was helpless. He was in a position to be killed. Then it was presented. It was captured, presented to David. And David said, oh, uh-uh, the food, I do not want, uh-uh, I will not touch of God's anointed. Then, he, listen, God was delighted for him to make that utterance because he, he did not only speak of God ordinance, but also he, he, he taught others that were around him. He taught others that were around him, touch not my prophet. In, in regardless of what, what? Judgment is not on you. God is the author of judgment. God is the author of judgment. It is not for you to decide. It is not for you to pass. It is all on to God. I will not touch of God's anointing. God was delighted in, in such humility. God was delighted in such humility. I don't know. Perhaps that was how the lineage of Jesus' birth began to come. The obedience that he, he transpired and he showed to others there, not only for him, those who were working with him, the king's makers, the kingship, the, king, the king's kindred, the community, he showed to them, I will not touch on. So he taught the he taught the village, he taught the community to leave him, let him be, let him be, let him be obedience. And God says, God says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So let us obey his word that we will remain in his presence. Let us be obedient to his command. Let us be obedient to his message. Let us be obedient to, his, to the teaching of God. Let us be obedient to his word. Through this word, we are made. Through this word, we have our being. Through this word, we remain. Remain in his presence. You are liberated already. Let your mindset change. Let you understand that anything that is happening, see it as a testing of your faith. See those challenge as a testing of faith. Don't deny the grace of God in you. Even though you are yet to see it happen, don't deny the grace of God in you. Even though you are yet to experience it, don't deny the grace of God in you. For God is all knowing. And God rewards obedience. God love you, blessed of yours. You are highly blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, all everyone that are partook in this uh, wonderful exercise. We've all been eating from above. Uh, we thank God for this wonderful word. We thank God for what he has given unto us. Uh, may, we, may we remain sustained with this word that we've received. May this knowledge become a new in our life. And may we be obedient to his word. And may we continue to remain obedient in his presence. Uh, you are blessed, Mr. Viewers. For those who want to give their life to God, 
for those who want to give their life to Jesus Christ, you want to know him, or you're feeling that you 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 fall away from his presence. So first Peter 5, verse 6 says, if you humble yourself at the wayside of the Lord, meaning you humble yourself to his will, to his way, you humble yourself according to his will, he will lift you up. You will be lifted up. So you want to be reconciled back to God, you want to give your life to Christ. Join us as we say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I welcome your word in my heart. Father, I humble myself before your presence and I confess my sin because I'm a sinner and sin is not pleasing to you. You wash my sin with your precious blood by laying your life on the cross of Calvary and you rose, you rose on the third day to give me life life of abundance. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for saving me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for redeeming my life. I know in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that you are my restorer, you are my redeemer, you are my life. Thank you, Lord, for writing down my name in the book of life. I am satisfied. I am no longer condemned. The old is gone. And the new one, God, I am now born, born and new. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah, you are born anew. The old is gone. The new has come upon your life. Continue to remain in the new life that you have received and allow his will to remain manifest upon your life. Thank you so much, uh, blessed saints. Thank you so much, brothers, sisters on Facebook. Thank you so much, those who will be watching on YouTube. Uh, thank you to everyone. Uh, that are partook. I see here uh, on Zoom we have a uh, oh someone okay no longer there um okay it's getting very right okay wonderful 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 amen hallelujah um we thank God we bless God uh blessed saints blessed viewers we thank everyone we thank you we thank all the saints thank all the brothers and sisters Amen. Is there a prayer request? We had um, Kenneth Perry with um, a couple of prayer requests. Mm. Um, the leaders follow. He asked for prayers for his family. Okay. He asked for um, a minister called Stephanie Perry. I think that she's probably a family member. He asked. Um, and for another family member called Daphne Perry. So he asked for prayer for prayers for specific people in his um, family. So people include Stephanie Perry mm -hmm. and Daphne Perry. And then he also asked for another one called Teresa Johnson, including Ryan and Powell. Okay. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for Kenneth Perry and the whole family at large. We pray for the brothers, we pray for the sisters, we pray for each and every member of the family. The hand of the Lord has come upon their life, upon their body, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, causing their life to prosper just as the soul prospers. The hand of the Lord has come upon their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to restore their life, to restore their health. We command health is restored, we command mind is restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command every challenges that come from the evil side of the path, evil presence depart from their life, evil presence depart from their life, evil presence depart from their family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command every injury spirit to depart from their life. We command that injury spirit, that injury man to depart from their ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is the glory of the Lord that has come upon their life, upon their body to stand them free. It is the light, the light of God that is active upon their life from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, bringing prosperity upon their ways, bringing prosperity upon their life, removing them from all challenges, removing them from all health challenges from all finance, uh, financial challenges in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare them free. I declare the presence of the Lord upon them. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom of the Lord has come upon their life. Freedom of the Lord has come upon their body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They begin to experience a new thing in their life. They begin to experience a new thing upon their ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I repel every thought of flesh. I repel the mind of flesh from their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They are not overcoming in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They are not overcoming in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ. It is the word of the Lord that has come to bring prosperity. It is the light, the light of God that is thundering upon their life, turning away evil darkness, turning away evil, evil desires from their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you, Kenneth. It is well with your sisters. It is well with your brothers. It is well with your whole family. The hand of the Lord has come taking care of everyone, bringing a reformation into the family, transforming life, transforming their ways, bringing the unfolding glory upon their lives in the mighty name of this place. Their lives and your life begin to prosper right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Kenneth Perry, if you are watching on Facebook, um, we advise you to uh, 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 give God thanks, give God glory, God has done it. Observe yourself, observe your loved ones, uh, observe your family members and, and, and send us your beautiful testimony. God has done a new thing in your lives. You are highly blessed. You are highly favored. You are divinely redeemed. Remain blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed saying, this of yours. Uh, uh, this is uh, um, uh, the end of the service for tonight. However, we'll be back tomorrow uh, on the platform of our Father. Ravani Center Ministries as we continue with the Tuesday school with our Father Papa Let's put that in. And on Wednesday, we'll, we'll be back on this platform. Uh, it's the Youth Service Day, and it's the first uh, of the month of June. Uh, we believe uh, we believe the Spirit of God will give us uh, uh, the grace for the theme of the month. Uh, we believe that uh, 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 we're looking forward to this wonderful month. Everything God does will remain in one continuous day of His high glory. And on Thursday, we'll be back again uh, for Thursday ministration, blessed saints. It is still the word that is active. We'll be ministering to upon every prayer request and everyone. As we are ministered now, we'll continue to minister. If you have any prayer requests also, you can equally send. You can equally send it right now. We're also going to minister. If you want to call the prayer line also, you can call the prayer line. We're also going to minister. Uh, it, it, days are not, it, no days is meant for ministration. Every day is ministration. I just want you to understand it. Every day is ministration. Uh, when we say Bible class, it's the Bible that we, that we, the Spirit of God is teaching us right now. It's busy ministering to us. So if there is no understanding, you ask questions. It's also ministration. Even on Wednesday, it's also ministration. Uh, Thursday, is also ministration. Sunday, is also worship and ministration. So it is still one continuous fight glory. So we're back again on Friday on the platform with our Father, Papa, the school. And it is the Friday school uh, with our Father and the sons. And on Saturday is the session that we love so much, the boys and girls, uh, the boys and girls giving Christ in fullness unto us all. And on Sunday, we'll be back again on this platform on Sunday from nine in the morning. And we'll finish, we'll be tuned over to our Father's page as we continue to glorify the King of Glory. And also, I'd like to uh, thank everyone, all the brothers, all the saints. I'd like to thank everyone on Facebook. I'd like to thank everyone on YouTube. I'd also like to thank all those that have participated in the Zoom section. Thank you so much, each and everyone. Uh, so we love you. Remain blessed. Let's continue to hold on in the spirit and let's continue to thank God for God is good all the time. It's mercy and endure forever. So from us here, Rabbanite International Ministries, this is to God be the glory. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.